Okay, looks okay, like baby looks like Johnny is over there. Looks like I'm over here. And looking better than ever. Let me pull up my list of dicks that I've sucked. Your dick lists? My dick list. Hey, welcome back to Anime Casuals. I'm Lucky. Here I go! This hand of mine is burning red! And I'm Michael. Realize the only ones who should kill are those who are prepared to be killed. Johnny. Your darkness swallowed up my son? Who decided that? Opting! Burning! Now all of you... Die! Die. Two... Don't look! What? Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Anime Casuals. I am Lucky. I am Mikael. I am Johnny. It's just ordinary sounding. Yeah, it is kind of ordinary sounding. And you know what else is ordinary sounding? Anime casuals. I almost said that wrong. That <laughs> I had a, wow. Sounding. That was uh, okay. Maybe it's not as ordinary sounding as I thought. I don't know. There was maybe uh, Lucky is having a mild stroke right now. <laughs> a little bit. I don't know, man. We just uh, we were playing Smite earlier and we got our asses kicked. So I think that might be uh, that <laughs> might be still affecting my uh, my vocabulary mm -hmm. right now. But you guys don't need to worry about that at home. Today we're gonna be talking about in our casual discussion uh, about our. I guess our favorite gods and deities in anime. We talked about demons, I think, a couple weeks ago or something like that. So, yeah, a while ago. Yeah, so um, now we can talk about uh, gods and deities because Johnny has suggested this. So since, uh, Johnny, you suggested this, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Okay. So my first choice, this is actually, uh, it came to my mind pretty quickly when I was trying to make this list. Uh, it's going to be Aphrodite oh. from Record of Ragnarok. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because honestly... Oh, that's right. I, I'm more impressed with how they portrayed this person. I mean, all the other gods are just kind of, I don't know, they're ordinary or they're just normal. But like she has this entire air about her. One, not only is she, you know, a beautiful character, but they, they have to, she personifies lust in that, you know, they're willing to do anything for her. These, these mm -hmm. guys are willing to, you know, hold up her titties, be her chair and her armrests. I mean, I think that's crazy. And I, I thought that was a really interesting interpretation and representation of mm -hmm you know, a deity, someone who is to be worshipped. So I went with Aphrodite. Johnny, that was an excellent explanation. And the fact that you didn't focus on TNA the whole time, I was proud of you. No, I, I made sure to make that a point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man, dude. That was like, yeah, I was going to say, that was like a really slick ass way of just saying she's got huge ass titties. And that's why I put her on this list. <laughs> um, back support. Yeah, right. Back support. Yeah, that's You know, true. that's why she's got those guys just going, uh -huh. holding her back up. Yeah, yeah they're dude. all back there. Oh There's my just gotta gosh. be guys on the line just waiting. Like, hey, your turn. Dude, <laughs> I completely forgot. Well, actually, since we're on the, the subject of Record of Ragnarok, uh, I put somebody from Record of Ragnarok on here, too. I liked, uh, I actually really liked Zeus. Uh, he's a weird... Because mm -hmm. everybody, they always, like, portray Zeus as this, you know, very... Um, I don't know. I don't know what you want to say, but like a very dignified older man, you know. But they, he's also mm -hmm. got like some dignifying features mm -hmm. of it. And in Wreck of Ragnarok, they kind of just throw that away. He's like this old, shriveled up man, except when he has to be. And then he's like this big, bulking behemoth and stuff. But um, <laughs> he's just grotesque with power. Yeah, and also the way he acts as well is pretty like because I, like I, what was it? A uh, Blood of Zeus tried to do this, and I was actually going to put Blood of Zeus, Blood of Zeus is Zeus on here. But I just feel like they tried to make him like the good guy too much. Whereas it's like you kind of impregnated this woman. Ran I mean, what is she supposed to say? No to you? Like how? How does anybody say no to a fucking <laughs> the king of the gods? Right? And then they try they try to make Hera seem like the bitch in that series. I was like, I don't know if this no, really no. works, you know. Um, but in that series, in Record of Ragnarok, I think they did a really good job with uh, uh with Zeus in that respect, and also like his personality. I, I just think, even though that's probably not how the Greeks would have portrayed him, I think like when you look at all his actions, that actually looks to be the the best. Uh, I, I think mm. that's one of my favorite interpretations of Zeus that I've seen so far. Yeah. Well, here's one that's not either one of your guys' picks, and it's not record of uh, Ragnarok Roar. It's Bing <laughs> X. Blah, 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 blah. It's Bing X from uh, Tanya, Saga of Evil. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Bing X is an excellent character because it really takes that reincarnation like thing that's in every isekai ever, and it really spins it on its head because in this version, <laughs> The main character is like, no, you can't be God because you're a contradiction on yourself and God can't be a contradiction. 
Also, you're trying to force me to believe in you, which a God does not need to do. The God does not need to do. So he nicknames this character who literally stops time and sends him to another plane of existence. Seems like a godly power. He goes, no, you know what I'm going to call you? Being X, because you're (laughs) not real or you're not the actual God. You're just some kind of trickster power that's trying to play with my life. Um, And like, I love uh, Tanya, uh, f- therefore, after called Tanya, Tanya's interaction with being X because constantly being X is like, well, you know what? I'm going to give you the power to become super magical and super powerful, but you have to pray to me first. And then Tanya's like, well, I don't have to mean it, do I? <laughs> so <laughs> Tanya just starts speaking like <laughs> prayers without and like really meaning it to the heart and then get super powerful that way. And the, the play between her and being X is really excellent because constantly being X is like, how you're not the kind of person I expected, but you know what? I'm going to send 1200 things at you to, to force you to believe in God and pray to me eventually for real. And then I'll win. But you only get this one life to prove to me like that, like you to like, like to, to get our struggles out. And I'm mm-hmm. like, this is awesome. I, I really like this. Nice. Good pick. Yeah. Uh, my next pick, um, as I think about it now, it, it, it probably falls into more of the deity category, but uh, it's King Kai uh, oh, from nice. Dragon Ball Z. Um, He's a god. Admittedly, I always wanted to see him fight. Because I was always hoping that as a, you know, guardian of like an entire quadrant of the galaxy or universe, whatever, that uh, you'd think he could do something cool. Admittedly, where the show is gone, I don't think that's ever, ever going to happen. I think King Kai is just happy on his, wherever he is now. I don't remember if he got his planet restored, but um, I, yeah, I always thought he was kind of a cool, I don't know, introductory to the mm-hmm. afterlife for them. Like, okay, hey welcome to my house. Um, you're dead. If you want to get stronger, that's fine. We can fix that. Uh, yeah. Go chase my monkey. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds sound terrible. Right say, yeah. Go After get my, said, monkey, like, my monkey, boy. monkey. Yeah, get my monkey. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> anyway, God. that's King Kai. Dude, wait, what? Wasn't his b- monkey named Bubbles like Michael Jackson's? Yeah, oh, my was. God, bro. There's no okay, whatever. I'm not even gonna touch that topic. Um, oh, to be fair, Michael Jackson could have named his monkey after the bo- after Dragon Ball Z. Oh man, I don't like this talk about monkeys anymore. I'm just gonna keep on <laughs> keep on chase going. Chase my with monkey, Licky. Yeah, Go no, chase my monkey. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I think. Oh man, I lost my whole train of thought after that that monkey fiasco. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> they they blew that up with a cell, right? Like Goku is just a yeah. dick and just like, just like, hey, there's this yeah. exploding cell. I couldn't it, really think of any other place to bring him. So. It's the transition. Speaking of God of High School and monkey gods. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 That's actually actually I didn't even think about that, Michael. That is a good a good uh, choice. But uh, I, I this uh, this next pick is gonna be uh, Loki from Jeez uh, Louise. What is the title? Is Dungeon? Uh, what a, what a low key pick. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, get the hell out of here, dude. Uh, from uh, what is it? Is it wrong to try a and pick up girls in, in, in a dungeon? No, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it wrong to try and pick up girls yeah, in a dungeon? Yeah. Uh, after watching Sword Oratoria, which was like a spin off series where it shows more of the Loki familia, I really actually started to like really like Loki. Um, and I don't know, it really works well with her, with it being a, a girl iteration too, like how sneaky she is, all that kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. especially like her eyes kind of look like a fox and she's also got the red hair. So, uh, mm-hmm. there's all that going for her, but yeah, she's got one of the strongest familias and also she's, she's absolutely one of the most ridiculous gods in, in all of the, well, whatever you call that place. Um, but it, she's like one of the most ridiculous gods. She has a, she's always trying to like feel boobs because she doesn't have any. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, I mean, pretty, who wouldn't? yeah. Right. Who wouldn't? Uh, but yeah, she's got like pretty much like the best rounded, uh, w- sorry, the most well-rounded familia out there. So, uh, yeah, she must be doing something right. So yeah, Loki's my next pick from, uh, is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon? That's what it is called. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Uh, Johnny, do you have a character from that, that series on your list? Uh, no, I actually don't. Perfect. Then I'm going to take Hestia. There you uh, go, buddy. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I've, uh, cause I think, I, I don't know. Remember which one of us watched that first. Was it me? Did I watch that? It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I always liked Hestia one because where she's from, She's just like a goddess of the the hearth. And I thought that was like, 
like she's got a few other like tiny little other like domains in there but like that's what i always remembered her as mm-hmm. going like in the great greek pantheon sh- sh- she's in charge of the, the fire that's in the middle she's keeping down the fort yeah she's holding down the fort and like like even like Hera, she's like and she's a god of motherhood and like pregnancy and like all these like cool things but like hestia is always like the one that's kind of like to the side and it's really cool to see like the way that the the anime progresses because she's all constantly always on the side like she's very lovable Mm -hmm. but she's not very powerful and she's not allowed to use her power and the blessing she gives is not as strong as everybody like every other major god that's there which is exactly what Hestia is all about and i really like that she's the center of a greek god goddess uh, at the same time Mm -hmm. um she's got you know lovely features and like an aqua style like dress that doesn't quite make any sense uh but i really like her character and how like genuine uh, how much of a genuine person she is like she's got all the range of emotions she loves bell but like she's also cautious about overstepping her bounds for the most part uh yeah she, you know, she rides the, that line man <laughs> yeah she rides that line she's chasing the monkey uh, <laughs> so yeah hestia is uh I, like one of my favorite goddesses out there nice uh my next pick is gonna be um it's truth from brotherhood nice um i man i th- this character was always pretty crazy to me it's just it's a blank slate it's almost it's nothing and everything apparently and that's uh it, you know for not too many representations of god himself you know i i it seemed like a pretty interesting one to see um almost like i don't i don't know i don't want to say it has like a childlike wonder but i mean it's definitely the attitude of um uh, they're a god they can act however they want yep. do whatever they want mm-hmm. kind of like uh how i was kind of thinking with zeus when you were talking about earlier i mean yeah he's a kooky old guy because <laughs> gonna stop him he's gonna do whatever he wants uh and so i i don't know just the uh represent- representation of truth i thought was really um just cool and it was nice how it's kind of uh interpretive itself you know you can look at it and be like what is it is it me is it something else? What what are you? I'm truth. <laughs> like, ah, shit. All right. I also like how it's like, whatever. Like, it's just always chilling. It's mm-hmm. just sitting there, relaxing and going, you see this crazy door? It's full of everything, but nothing you'll remember. <laughs> but I have to sit here facing this door for all time. <laughs> Don't go in that door. Man, dude, the truth. Yeah, it reminds me of that, uh, that the song Epic. It's it what is it you know it's like <laughs> are you guys ever gonna answer what what, what it is no no but it, it's it it is it. yeah, it's it it's it don't know what it is but, but what is it you know it's, <laughs> it's like man it's just the never-ending verse that just keeps going um so actually uh michael had actually mentioned her a little bit before uh aqua from konosuba is one of those gods that are goddesses that uh I don't know. It makes you wonder what the qualifications of being a god is you know after a while <laughs> um and also seeing, seeing like, the fall from grace, like, you know, I used to play, like, God of War a lot, and just seeing mm-hmm. Kratos go from from person to God to God to person, and that kind of transition, I, re- I actually really like that idea of, it's it's almost like a God isekai, you know, the God gets reincarnated into real life, and it's like, oh, shit, this is going to be, yeah. this is gonna be some <laughs> rough stuff, so, um, I, I just really like the fact that they brought this goddess down, down from grace, and they finally gave one of these isekai protagonists, like, the means to fuck with the God instead of the other way around, you know, um, so it just, like, just seeing uh, Kazuma just straight up be like, well, I, I can I wish for this goddess to come with me? And just seeing her, like, hilarity ensue and also seeing how uh, how kind of out of touch with being a human she is for a little while. I mean, she's not completely out of touch with yeah. it, but she's, uh, she's also, like, very vain. She's very... Uh, and, you know, that's what you would expect from a god who's around other gods, right? You expect, like, if you had a... If you heard, like, a talk on Mount Olympus or something like that or, you know, some other place or Valhalla or something like that, you'd be like... Oh yeah, this definitely seems like this. This is the way the gods talk, and then you know, like, oh, you should worship me. You should do this. So, uh, seeing her like walking amongst humans and nobody giving a shit about her is just so funny to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, also, uh, so that is Aqua from Konosuba. 
Uh, so I wanted to, you know, while we're at this and before I talk about my favorite, my favorite God of all time, uh, I just want to throw in a nice DBZ God because DBZ has a bunch of little gods. And oh, Johnny yeah. kind of talked about King Kai. Mm. Uh, this God is not really in the series for a really long time. Maybe like six episodes and then occasional like clips of this God are shown throughout like a certain tournament. But Zenosama, it has to be one of my favorite gods out there. For the sheer fact of destructibility and overall power to a childlike personality. Like the weird back and forth between these two things going like, what is this? And why, why did, why did DBZ, why did Dragon Ball choose to go in this direction with an all powerful God that can destroy anything and entire realms of existence? Well, only to, you know, have fun with this character and have Goku have the ultimate antagonist. <laughs> yeah, and best buddy. <laughs> and best buddy. And two best buddies. Um, so Zenosama being the be-all end all of the Kai's, like Kai's lead to gods, gods of destruction with whatever we we is angels or angels something. that all lead up to the ultimate Zenosama, who is the top of everything. And has the amazing ability to just destroy things on a like molecular level that it never existed and nothing can ever beat Zenosama. Zeno goes, I don't want you to exist anymore. And it doesn't matter what you are, you're gone. And Zenosama can do that to the entire realm of existence if Zenosama wanted to. So I really like it because Zenosama's just like, I want to play. But if you make me mad, I'll kill everybody, you know, just chilling, you know, whatever. And Goku convinces Zenosama to do a grand tournament where, you know, existences and planes and dimensions can disappear for for the for just the entertainment of this game. individual. <laughs> High stakes. High stakes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, I actually got one more on my list. Cool. Uh, I do have a little bit of a lightning round list, but uh, uh, it's Ryuk from Death Note. Um, I've said it before. I've always liked how um, he's very just kind of random and just kind of like, I just wanted to see what would happen with this Death Note. So I just kind of threw it on the ground, waited for someone to pick it up. Uh, and then he just has a simple joy in life. And, you know, that's just great. Mm -hmm. Apples, an apple a day. We'll keep the Ryuk with you. Yeah. We'll give you a Shinigami and a Death Note and a lot of power, and you can do a bunch of terrible or good stuff. It's up to you. Oh, man, dude. Well, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into that lightning round right now. Um, so I have, uh, let's see, Hollow from Spice and Wolf. Uh, not, not in terms of power, not exactly there, but it, it, she, she does represent like, a, like a, a harvest in some village or something like that. And so it's really cool to see her relationship grow with the main character who I don't really remember off the top of my head now. I'm thinking about it. Um, there is, uh, I feel like I know what Michael's God is going to be, so I'm not going to say this one. Uh, Athena from Saint Seiya is uh, another one that I... I kind of like. She's a little bit annoying. There's there's some parts of me because her she it's weird because she has like a human form and then like sh the human form like is, is the incarnation of Athena. But the human form is kind of a bitch in the beginning of the series and then she eventually becomes good. So uh, kind of on the fence a little bit about that. Um, the goddess from uh, uh, Askrat or. Uh, the world's finest assassin gets reincarnated in another world as as an aristocrat. Uh, that's a weird one. I really don't know what's up with her. She's very uh, mysterious <laughs> and uh, kind of scares me to a certain degree. Uh, so yeah, that. Uh, and then I also had the the truth from Fullman Alchemist, just because I I really like the like how many different ways you can take that shit, dude. Because uh, you know after playing so much Smite now, dude, you you realize how many freaking god iterations there are in the. <laughs> like we we make gods for everything man like there's a, eventually there's going to be a god of computers and a god of, you know people are just going to start making more hey, gods don't get into american gods with this because yeah american right gods has that hey exactly <laughs> so anyway why don't you uh go ahead and give us your lightning round uh michael okay we'll start with my top one uh tet from yep, no game I no life <laughs> uh tet is by far my favorite god of everything uh, I really like uh, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and games like a lot. I really like when anime creates its own games. Like I watched 
it's not a creative game because already it's a made game. Like I watched Hikaru no Go for a really long time, which is the game about playing Go. <clears throat> I really like Yu-Gi-Oh and all those made up games before the anime series comes out. And then the anime series. Uh, I like all things gaming and Tet literally being the god of games and creating an entire world that's based on the fundamental truth of gaming and going, it doesn't matter as long as you follow these rules, don't fight, and everything can be solved with video games or just gaming gaming in, in general. And I'm like, that's amazing. I love this. This is the, the best world because even the most powerful, the ones that can use magic to rain death upon hundreds of thousands of people are bound by these rules to be like, well, you just got to play a game. And, you know, you can't fight anymore. Just just games. I love that. Um, up there is Koenma and Botan from Ooh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Nice. Uh, Botan being basically the Grim Reaper herself, and then Koema being the son of, uh, like, death, I guess, Hades, or, like, the underworld. I don't know, I can't get DBZ out of my head whenever I think of the underworld, and we just see, like, that the Ox King, or no, not the Ox King. I don't remember his name, but he's just chilling there. Yeah, the big guy mm-hmm. at the chair at the desk. Yeah, the shit. big guy with the chair. Yeah. That's basically, Koema's, like, the son of that guy. Yeah. Um, I have uh, Death from Soul Eater. I love that he's like an all powerful like God, but also is like very quirky and kind of strange. I have Totoro, who if you've ever seen like the short that goes with Totoro, Totoro is basically like a Grim Reaper who guides souls to where they need to go. Mm -hmm. Um, Not told that in the movie, but told that in like a special cut that has tiny cat bus in it. Super cute. And then... Up there as well is the Egyptian god cards. Uh, those are amazing gods, Ra, Obelisk, and uh, Slifer the Sky Dragon, and by far changed the face of Yu-Gi-Oh itself by giving it like actual amazing super monsters that cannot be defeated by anything else. Oh, and I think that's it. That's a good pick. Those are some good picks. Uh, uh, so it, I actually have one more on my lightning round. Arceus. Um, Okay, I guess I'm done. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, it was. It did have Obelisk because I. I don't know. I just always think he's a fun card, and you always hear Obelisk the Tormentor, um, Fist of Fate. But no, my other one is going to be a, a character from a, an anime called Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs. Uh, I, I think her name is Chitose, and basically she's a, a deity of luck, which I. I don't know. I. It's so random. Like there's all these random people at this hot spring, but then the caretaker is this luck deity, but she doesn't use her powers a lot because. Her whole thing is, uh, it's like a double-edged sword. Like, she can use it to get out of a situation, but then it's going to backfire somehow, Ooh. either on her or someone else, you know? So, uh, yeah, I just thought she was a funny character. She acts like a kid, even though she's, like, an ageless god. <laughs> like, she literally goes to school, but, you know. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, those are those are some good picks. I actually... Uh... Yeah, I really didn't think about the Egyptian god cards, but, you know, they do have god in their name, so I don't know why I didn't think about them. Uh, <laughs> they're, literally, well, and they're also literally Egyptian gods. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Dog monster. laughs> you know, my favorite god, it's the, the, you know, the whole Egyptian pantheon. They're pretty cool. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that just reminded me of this... Uh, this fucking joke thing where it's like as like a rabbi, a priest, and like uh whatever the 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 head person is for like the the Muslim religion, and uh, they all die at the same time, and they're like, okay, we're gonna figure out what the what who is right, right? Because they're all going to the afterlife, and it's all mm-hmm. Egyptian gods. They're like, fuck, you know, they're, they're all like, damn, <laughs> they have like the eye of Horus like looking down on them, like, damn it, none of us were right. Fucking Sobex just there about to eat them. And yeah, right. Like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn, dude. So uh, anyway, I thought I would share that with you guys, but anyway, guys. Remember, you can check out all things casual at the link tree in the description box down below. Also, if you'd like to email us, you can email us at anime casuals with an S, real, R E A L, at gmail.com. But as always, guys, don't forget to keep it casual.